It kind of feels like an N64 kind of day. Let me grab a few controllers. Take this black one. Oh, this purple one, definitely. What's this? Do I have a lime green controller? Oh. Well, I guess when life hands you citrus. Hey everyone, it's Tim with a different kind of video today. A few weeks ago I posted an April Fool's video featuring a DS game, Brain Age, but disguised as a cooking mama recipe for ceviche. A handful of you guys seemed a little let down that I didn't actually make a Latin American seafood dish, so I figured today I'd walk through an actual ceviche recipe with you all. Since I couldn't find anything ceviche related in a game, I'd like to chat about another thing I often see here in the comments. Questions about this channel's effect on my cooking. Making these videos has had a huge positive impact on my kitchen competence, but maybe not for reasons you'd think. Cooking with Cooking Mama has definitely inspired new culinary adventures, but I think I've learned the most from amazing conversations about these attempts on YouTube and social media. So today I'll be making ceviche while pointing out some of my biggest lessons learned from you guys. Ceviche is a popular Latin American and Caribbean dish typically made from raw fish cured in citrus juices such as lemon or lime, and spiced with chili peppers, chopped onions, tomato, salt, avocado, cilantro, and other flavors. If you want to follow along at home, you'll need a tomato, a red onion, two lemons or enough for about a quarter cup of juice, three limes or about a quarter cup of juice, a few peppers, I typically use serrano, but I have these leftover Thai chilies, so I'll be experimenting with them today. A tablespoon of salt, a pinch of cayenne pepper, about a pound of sashimi grade fish. I'm using salmon. In the US, this isn't really a regulated designation, so just make sure to ask if the fish was properly prepared to eat raw. And cilantro for garnish. This is a great dish to make since it's no longer chilly outside, and I'm not tied up with other things. I personally hope it turns out sublime, but if it doesn't, we can talk about what went wrong. I'm certainly not fishing for compliments. So let's make ceviche and talk about what I've learned from you guys so far. Alright, so the first thing we'll need to do is cube and dice the fish, onions, tomatoes, and chilies. Starting with my deboned cut of salmon, I'm going to cube my fish into about half inch pieces. We want to maximize the surface area coated in citrus juice, so feel free to go smaller. I'm going to go pretty recent for this first one. The seaweed and kelp from the miso soup episode had such clean edges because of something that I picked up from the onigiri comment section. Using kitchen scissors to cut these sheets seems pretty simple, but it genuinely had a huge positive impact working with Nori again. Setting that aside, we should dice half of the onion. Speaking of cooking techniques, I wasn't at all familiar with cooking pizza crust, and slowly baked it at a pretty low temperature when I was making it with Cooking Mama. A lot of people shared their experience with baking times, and a few even shared their own amazing recipes. So now I know to bake it at a much higher temperature with a way lower cooking time. We'll want to scoop out the tomato seeds before dicing the fleshy parts and adding it with our onions to the cubed fish. Regional food differences usually account for some confusion while I'm mimicking Cooking Mama. One of my first encounters with this had to be making a simple sandwich. Mama's bread initially seemed really strange, but I was surprised to see that large crustless bread can be pretty popular outside of North America. Next we'll need to seed and dice the peppers. Since I've never really worked with a chili this small, this was kind of a trial and error process until I was able to find a way to scrape out the tiny seeds. If you decide to seed Thai chilies for the first time, I just recommend to be careful. Another really interesting regional difference that I was completely unaware of was the huge variety of eggplants that exist. After making curry with you guys, I could probably identify American, Italian, Indian, Chinese, and Japanese eggplants. Now mix these cubed and diced ingredients with salt and a pinch of cayenne pepper. Use this mixture to create a thin layer on the bottom of a non-reactive casserole pan, or other large dish. A few people mentioned freezing churros before frying. This is cut nori with scissors levels of helpful. Ceviche isn't cooked, but it often looks that way. Citrus juice denatures the fish proteins to give it that familiar opaque color. 
So I'm going to cut a few lemons and limes to get about a half of cup of citrus juice. In a pretty early video for potato salad, I made something that looked only slightly appetizing. After talking with you guys, I discovered that I was approaching Japanese recipes with American ingredients. And I think that really helped early on to determine where I shop for certain videos. We'll then pour this over our layer of salmon, cover, and refrigerate for an hour or two. After that, we can turn the fish to make sure everything is thoroughly coated and return it to the refrigerator for a few more hours, or overnight. I've had a few firsts on this channel, and the most obvious has to be my attempt at dark green fondant. I've seen a ton of awesome coloring suggestions that I didn't even know existed. Everything from gel dye to charcoal. Garnish with cilantro, and the finished ceviche should be ready to be enjoyed with tortillas, avocado, or just on its own. Thanks for watching, and thanks to everyone who's contributed to these awesome food discussions. I'll return to my typical video soon, but I wanted to make this while it was still April. As always, subscribe if you want to see more, and please comment any recommendations for my ceviche recipe. It's super simple, so I'm sure it could be improved in really interesting ways. See ya!